Imagine living your life after 50 and feeling energized and excited about your future. Welcome to the Women in the Middle podcast, the podcast for women who are ready to figure out what they want and create the life they deserve. Here's your host and master certified life coach, Susie Rosenstein. Hey there, welcome back to the podcast, Women in the Middle. I'm your host, Susie Rosenstein, and I am so glad to be here with you again for this week's episode, which is a topic I'm pretty excited about because it's about something near and dear to my heart. This week is all about doing something to help with the transition from nest to emptying nest to empty nest and your life with grown kids. Yes, today's topic is all about what I like to call an empty nest dog, or for those of you who are really brave, an empty nest puppy. More specifically, today we're talking about bringing a dog into your empty nest. I guess if you're really getting creative, you could call it a bird dog to the rescue in cases like this. Before we get going, though, I just want to thank you for clicking play and tuning in. And if it's your first time, thanks so much for listening and checking the Women in the Middle podcast out. In the nutshell, This podcast is all about this crazy phase of life and how to love it more than you currently do. I'm a master certified life coach trained at the Life Coach School, which was one of the best decisions I've made in years. And I have to tell you, I couldn't be more thrilled to be your midlife coach and to be doing all of this exploration with you right here, right now in this podcast, wherever you are. And I know that that might even mean that I'm in the bathroom with you. And it's all good as long as you don't drop that phone. I guess you could say that this podcast is really all about how you get clear, get excited, and get going when it comes to midlife. And I'm sure I don't have to remind you that life really is short. Life is short, my friends. So let's get going. Okay, today's topic holds a warm spot in my heart and a slobbery spot on my clothes. Today, we're taking a deep, fuzzy dive into understanding more about a completely loyal and lovable canine companion and why it's usually a pretty good idea to invite a dog into your empty nest. Specifically, we're going to look at the pros and the cons and whether it's actually possible to fill the void left by your kids with a dog. I wonder what you're thinking right now. Do you think, uh, yeah, Susie, this is a completely obvious topic for the Women in the Middle podcast? (laughs) Or something like this, uh, "Mm, I don't know where Susie's going with this one. Remember, we love to talk about all things 50 around here, and this podcast is how to love life after 50. Now, I know plenty of you amazing women in the middle aren't yet 50 or are over 59, and it's all fine. But I think you will agree that a common thing that happens in many women's 50s is the whole empty nest thing. Kids are either moving out, starting to think about moving out, or coming and going. They're typically still on the payroll, as we like to say, and it usually takes some time for them to really move out. And during this whole phase or transition, many women in the middle are starting to have thoughts like these. What will I do when my kids are gone? Will my kids still need me? How will I occupy my time? What does this mean for my relationships with my kids? Who am I when I'm not parenting? And of course, what can I use that bedroom for? (laughs) We all have our eyes on that bedroom. As you know from listening to this podcast, there are thoughts behind these questions. In fact, whenever you ask yourself a question, the answer is a thought. And thoughts create feelings. So let's take a closer look. When you ask yourself the question, what will I do when my kids are gone? How do you answer? I bet some of you think, oh my God, I have no clue and it's freaking me out. And others of you are thinking, party time. (laughs) And the feelings created by thoughts like these are quite different too. It's the same with the other common questions you might be asking yourself. This question, will my kids still need me? That's another great example. Some of you might be thinking, that's it. Once they're out the door, they won't need me anymore. And others of you have more of an appreciation that the way they need you will probably change, but they still need their mom in their lives. And so it goes. Let's take a look at that question. Will they need me anymore? And notice how that makes you feel. 
probably sad, maybe lonely. And that really gets at the whole emptiness thing. It's really about loneliness and loss and adjusting to the new normal. The transition into learning to have relationships with adult children, that's it. That's the transition that Empty Nest is all about. And you really can see that by these common questions and thoughts that you have about this Empty Nest transition, you really get at that. They really all point to the same kind of thing. Who are you when you're not actively parenting? It's not hard to see how you could feel sad about this transition. Now, don't get me wrong. Everyone doesn't feel sad. Everyone doesn't feel lonely. And everyone doesn't feel this way all of the time. But it's pretty hefty transition. (laughs) It's a pretty hefty transition period in most people's lives. That stage between when your kids are in your house and your grandchildren are coming to visit. So when empty nest is a part of your life, it's so great to know that the thoughts like these are completely optional. You can think them if you like feeling sad and lonely, but you don't have to. You can look at your whole empty nest situation differently and think about having a dog as a lovable distraction and an incredibly useful member of your family. Now, I'm not suggesting you ignore your feelings. No, I love encouraging all of you guys, all of you amazing women in in the middle to experience your feelings, to allow your feelings, to understand that the positive, useful feelings are as common as the feelings that are sad and a little bit more difficult. But I really think that you should explore what you make this phase of your life mean And we've gone into this in greater detail in a few other episodes. So if you want to really explore that, just check out the other episodes on the list in iTunes and on my website. But today we're taking a different look at the whole thing. We're going to start with a new question. The new question is, why is inviting an adorable furry friend into your life something to seriously consider? Well, my friends, it's really quite simple. It gives you a way to continue to enjoy nurturing a living thing. We really can't get around this. It's who we are. As midlife women, nurturing the way many of us like to do doesn't have to be over. And I might add, the research is quite compelling about the positive health benefits of pets and people. So why not get in on that action too, right? (laughs) In fact, I was so fascinated by this whole topic that way back in 1989, I did my master's thesis in applied social psychology at the University of Guelph about the relationship between children and their pet dogs. And there has been way more research in the area of animal therapy lately, too. Science definitely shows that animals can play a super positive role in social support and both mental and physical health. Relationships and interactions with animals can definitely help with anxiety and loneliness. A variety of animals, too, can be quite effective when it comes to helping with fear, stress, anxiety, Even fish have been shown to have a really strong health benefit. So just to really illustrate this point, I found a really nice little summary article by Sydney Stevens in the Mother Nature Network that includes links to 11 recent scientific studies that show how much pets are good for your health. There is really solid research evidence in these areas. So I'm just going to list them. And then if you're more interested in the gory details, Just go to the show notes and you can click on the actual studies. So number one, how pets help you live longer, healthier lives. There is research to support that. There's research about how pets can actually alleviate allergies and boost immune function, how pets can increase your fitness quotient, how pets can help you decrease stress, how they can help you boost your heart health, how they can make you more social, (laughs) how they can help you Uh, help Alzheimer's patients socially as well, how pets can enhance social skills with kids with autism, how pets can dampen depression and boost mood, how pets can even help with PTSD, how pets can help you fight cancer, and how pets can help you decrease pain. So like I said, if you'd like to check this out in detail, I've included the link in the show notes. So I'm pretty sure you agree how beneficial pets can be in your life, especially dogs, when it comes to your health. So let's take a closer look at that big question. Can an empty nest dog fill the hole left by children when they leave? 
My amazing women in the middle, I really do think the answer is yes. Of course, it's not the same. And like I said, I do believe you should take a close look at what you actually think when you feel sad about this new phase of life. The awareness of your thoughts is really the key to help you figuring it all out. Of course, having a dog is not the same as having a son or a daughter, but it's pretty darn good. It is pretty darn good, and here is why. Your empty nest is really too quiet. It's weirdly quiet. It's not normal. No one likes it. We think we like quiet. At times, we crave quiet. But empty nest quiet is just a bit too much, in my opinion. I was surprised by this when one of my sons, the drummer, when he left home, you met him in episode 43. That episode was about taking a look at the empty nest from the inside out or from the kid's perspective. So when he left, it got really quiet around here because he is an avid drummer, a serious drummer, a drummer who practiced a lot. It was brutal. Now, I loved that he found something he loved. But with our open concept 1963 Brady Bunch house, the sound travels like crazy and it is just so loud. It's impossible to find a place in this house where I couldn't hear it. Like the best spot was in my bathroom, like the door closed in a corner. It was just so hard. Yet when he left, it was eerily quiet. I actually missed the noise or shall I say music. I missed the music. (laughs) And then there's the other two kids. They're loud too. And so are their friends. And I miss all of it. The hooting, the hollering, all of the stuff that goes on with the video games, all of them goofing around in the bathroom, their overall shenanigans. Yep, I miss it all. So as women in the middle, you are not that used to quiet like this. And this is one of the reasons to consider getting a dog or any pet for that matter. Not for the barking, not for the noise, but for the commotion and the activity. And that's what creates sound. So it's more the activity, the commotion, and that kind of sound. Now, we also have a parrot who's quite the chatterbox. She helps too. You can check her out on YouTube as my sister once got a really cool recording of her saying supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, and she posted it, and now there's over 100,000 hits. Can you believe it? So if you're curious about my little Quaker parrot, Dee Dee, you can look her up on YouTube, and I will give you the link in the show notes. But I digress. Another reason to get a dog is because of how excited they are when you come home. Nothing like a smiley face full of whiskers to greet you when you walk in the door. Most of us get a warmer reception from our dogs than anyone else certainly more than from our kids. Dogs are literally so excited to see you. Some are so excited that they pee a little bit. The kids were never that happy when I came home. Well, maybe when they were toddlers. (laughs) Neither is my husband. It's hard to get an excited reaction around here. I could scream my head off that a super yummy dinner was ready with no response. But with a dog, like like my dog Nico, for example, it's completely different. All I have to do is sneeze And he goes crazy to make sure that I'm okay. He comes running over. He starts licking on me to check on me. I don't know what he thinks is going on with sneezes, but I don't think he gets it. (laughs) Speaking of Nico, I know many of you women in the middle out there know that he is a Landseer Newfoundland. I've talked about him before. He's 135 pounds of incredibly handsome canine. (laughs) But I'm not sure that you also knew that he is an empty nest puppy, or at least he was when we got him. We knew all too well that the kids would be out the door in no time, four and a half years ago when we got Nico. We had had golden retrievers for 20 years, and after our last one, Jasper, when he died, I felt the need to switch things up a little bit. I didn't think I could handle another wonderful golden retriever emotionally after that. They're just such a beautiful breed on the inside and out. I thought that going forward, we needed another swimmer because of the family cottage situation that we have. So the hunt began. We made sure to pick a breed that was a bit of a couch potato too, because we knew that the kids wouldn't be around that often and the energy level in the house would go way down after they left. And we had no intention of being overwhelmed by an extremely high energy puppy dog. We knew that the puppy phase would be high energy, but we really didn't want to breed like some of those super high energy ones like Jack Russell Terriers or Border Collies. Those guys have so much energy and high exercise needs, and we just didn't want to go down that road. 
So the Newfoundland <laughs> fit the bill. And we picked such a good guy. He is the most lovable mess of a dog I've ever seen. Slobber? Oh, yes. Dirt? Oh, my God. He tracks in a ton. Shedding? Like a professional, this boy can shed. Uh, and his special ancestral fish diet? Oh, my God. Nice and expensive and stinky. Very stinky. This boy stinks in every way. His, his, just his shedding, his nature, how he smells when he gets out of the lake, and his food. But he does enjoy salmon, herring, and sardines right out of the can. People food, of course. He keeps us busy. My husband is working with him to get his carding and water rescue skills perfected too, so he can earn his keep. Carding. Do you guys know about carding? Like, I don't know if you've seen uh, some old cartoons or some pictures of Newfoundlands. They used to help uh, postmen carry the mail around in a cart, like they would pull a cart. So when you hang out with a bunch of new phoners, that's what you learn. So <laughs> all of a sudden with Nico by my husband's side, he's doing all this stuff and he's become a bit of a chick magnet too. My husband has never gotten so much attention from women. Everyone loves Nico and they want to ask my husband questions about the breed and the dog and they want to get to know him. I have seen cars pull over to the side of the street, get out when he's taking them for a walk. Um, it's crazy what happens when we're out with that dog, but a lot of women come over and want to talk to um, him about the dog. <laughs> it's understandable, too, because I have to say, Nico the Noof is super handsome. As I mentioned, we had our impending empty nest in mind when we welcomed a Newfoundland into our lives. And we haven't looked back. And Nico's story touches on several of the solid reasons to get a dog when the kids move out. The preoccupation with how to have fun with your dog is one. What you can teach your dog and all of the socializing that goes on as a result of the people falling in love with your dog. That's another one. But there's way more. Remember how much fun it was making plans with your kids when they were little? It's kind of like that. You can find all kinds of fun things to do with your dog. What, it doesn't really matter what your interest is. If it's exercise, if it's teaching them new things, there's so many things you can do with your dog and just experiences to share. So there's a lot more reasons too. Here is a list of why I think an empty nest dog is a great idea. Now these are in no particular order. And yes, I'm biased, but I really do feel strongly about this. Like I said, the empty nest is just way too quiet, so creating some noise and commotion is a great reason to get a dog. It makes the house more alive. Unconditional love is the next reason. I don't know about you, but I love feeling loved. A dog can totally do that for you. The dog gives love easily, and so do you. Now, I know that you know that feelings, like love, come from thoughts, so the dog doesn't actually make you feel loved, but your thoughts about your dog do. And it's so easy to think thoughts like this when you have a dog in your life. When you see that cute, happy face, when you see how excited they are to see you, when you receive their love, it's a beautiful thing. More love is always a good thing. Come to think of it, unconditional love really is a dog's specialty. They love you no matter what. They think so highly of you and it's amazing. And that may be more of a bonus than when you get, uh, than what you get from your typical kid, if you know what I mean. I mean, I know your kids love you, but they really don't show it that way. <laughs> and there's a lot more issues to work out. Now, you also get companionship, a snuggle on the couch, a walk, a car ride, and someone else in your house. How great is that? Now, your dog can also be your exercise buddy who's always available. And that's pretty good because many of us know Motivation is always easier to come by when you're in a group or with other people for a lot of us. But at our age, it's not always easy to find an exercise buddy who has the same availability as you do. And your four-legged partner is always ready to go, is always there for you, no questions asked. Your dog can also give you a sense of purpose. The routine you've had for years and years has changed, right? No more cooking for your kids, no more driving them around, no more running your life around their daily schedules and practices. Your pet will have needs, though, and you will most likely need to develop a new schedule, a new routine to accommodate your pet. Eating, walking, grooming, those things for sure. And like I said, you may also want to get involved with activities with your dog. 
uh, like we have with uh, with Nico. Uh, we have gotten really active with the Southeastern Ontario Newfoundland Association. Who knew? And this is where Nico learns his water rescue skills. We got involved uh, visiting a retirement home with our Golden back in the day, who was St. John's Ambulance certified. He was a pet therapy dog. So that's something we really enjoyed to do with our Golden. There are so many things you can do with your dog if you want to. You just have to look around and you'll find them. Personally, I've always been fascinated with agility training. Maybe Nico is not the best breed for it, (laughs) but it sure would be funny. And you run around with that. So you never know what I'll do next. And I can't wait to hear what you guys come up with. Uh, And I'd love to. I'd really love to hear what you're doing with your dogs and what your thoughts are about what I'm talking about here. Uh, Like I mentioned earlier, a dog can help fill the void between when your kids leave to when they come back as parents themselves. Dogs can keep you pretty occupied until the grandchildren are in the mix, and then the grandchildren will also have the benefit of knowing and loving your dog. Dogs can also help keep you youthful. They make you feel younger because they get you out, and they're just so darn funny. They steal your underwear. They make cute faces. They make great models for photos, and of course, some of them even let you dress them up. I don't get that far with Nico. Like sometimes I put a bow tie on him and on his birthday, I make him wear a hat and take a picture and give him a special cookie. (laughs) But I know some of you women in the middle out there um, might have other ideas about dressing your dogs up and it just can be fun. All of it can be fun, whatever floats your boat. It's always a good idea to have more fun in your life and dogs are fun and funny. Laughing keeps you young at heart. Dogs also make it way easier to talk to strangers. This is super relevant with empty nests because of loneliness. I hear this a lot with my clients. So many of them don't have enough friends in their lives at this age. Many women at our age find that they have to be super intentional about developing new friendships, and you have to make an effort to maintain your old friendships. A cute dog will help you talk to more people and get out there more. Just meet more people, and you have to start somewhere. I really think that getting a dog when the kids leave the house can be such a positive change in your life. It's something good when you may not be that crazy about the transition of being without your kids at home. It's a plus when you may be viewing the change as a minus. A dog will add value to your life for sure. It can be a fun new focus for you. Now, I have to say there's another way to look at all of this. I have to tell you about a new concept, this program that I found in New Zealand, and it gives a bit of a different take on the whole empty nest experience. Now, my take on all of this is about the importance of adding a dog to your empty nest. But this program is all about thinking of the solution as a child replacement. And they are pretty bold about it too. And it just cracked me up. In fact, they have come up with a brilliant charitable program to rehome rescue dogs with empty nesters, and it's called the Pedigree Child Replacement Program. Why not, right? These kids have the nerve to leave us and not answer our texts in a timely fashion. Let's get busy with an actual replacement plan that works. This interesting and humorous scheme is the work of the Pedigree Adoption Drive Charitable Trust and a group of dog welfare organizations, like I said, in New Zealand. They've set up a website, (laughs) replacethem.co.nz, that invites empty nest parents to adopt a rescue dog. And it even tries to match you up with one that has similar characteristics to the kid you're replacing. It is absolutely hysterical and amazing. (laughs) There, they are already a hundred dogs on their database. So when you go to their website, the first thing you read sets the tone. You see a picture of a teenage kid in a frame. You read, when your kid moves out, move on. And then the frame falls down. And when it comes up again, it has a picture of a dog in it. (laughs) So as you can imagine, I was intrigued. And I'm sure you would be too. So then I click to the next screen. It reads, so your little pumpkin pie moved out. As you sit in a quiet house lamenting, How quickly they grow up, a dog sits in a shelter longing for a home, a home it can fill with love and companionship, a life it can fill with tail-wagging affection. Pumpkin pies gone, move on. 
and the button, replace my child. <laughs> I, honestly, I could not believe that I was reading this. It was so funny. And then you're guided to answer a few questions about your own kid, about your own son or daughter, including how long their hair is and how much they eat. <laughs> and then the site comes up with a canine match. Perfect for you. So I filled it out and I got matched with Ziggy, who was uh, perfect for me, said the site. They were a perfect replacement for my son, Max, and he'll always be excited to see me and he'll never be accepted to an overseas university. <laughs> That's actually what it says. So there you have it. A lot of amazing reasons to get a dog and a totally fun concept about replacing your kids with love. But it's not for everyone. So there are two big cons to consider along with the pros when you're thinking about getting a dog in your empty nest. The first one is that having a dog really does tie you down during a time of your life when you could be free as a bird, a bird with an empty nest. Dogs really do need you and they aren't as self-sufficient as cats. When you go away, there's an expense and worry associated with pet arrangements to, that you have to make to care for your animal when you're gone. I have to admit, when I go away, my biggest concern is always my dog. And that just touched on the other con, there is a huge expense associated with bringing a dog into your family. It's not just buying and adopting the dog. It's the food, the vet bills, the training, the pet sitting, all of the fun stuff too. The treats, the toys, the paraphernalia. Once I spent $50 on a beautiful hand-painted Australian dog collar, only to realize afterwards that after my golden swam in the lake all summer, it stunk. I thought my dog stunk, but really it was the collar. It took forever to figure out what was going on total waste of money. There are just so many ways to spend money on your dog and spending this way is so much fun and you just really have to watch your budget. So what are you thinking about all of this? Is bringing a dog into your family uh, a new thing for you? If it is a new thing, there's a few other things you need to consider. The first thing is you really have to make sure to get your head around what you want in terms of energy. How energetic a dog are you looking for? What type of lifestyle do you have and what type of lifestyle do you want to have going forward? So if you don't know a lot about breeds, if you're uh, going to a rescue and you're trying to understand the background of a dog and what that dog's breed or mix of breeds might be like, you may need some help and do a little bit of research. It really is important. It's not like the dogs have a personality or like a dog analogy, right? And some of it is just their genetic makeup. Okay, the other thing is commitment. A relationship with the dog is a long-term commitment. They totally become part of your family, and this commitment should be taken seriously. You really have to be honest with yourself about your thoughts. You really have to think about what you want going forward, what kind of lifestyle you want. Are you ready for this type of commitment? Are you looking forward to a little bit more freedom? Can you have freedom with a dog? Just really think about what you want going forward and how it makes you feel when you think about life without a dog and how you make uh, those thoughts make you feel when you think about sharing your life with a dog. So there you have it, a totally fun and meaningful empty nest strategy that will keep you young at heart and out and about. I feel really strongly about the importance of the value of relationships with dogs I've seen so much good when it comes to the love you give and receive from these amazing creatures. Dogs have been incredibly important throughout my entire life, and it's no surprise to me that I've incorporated a big, beautiful dog like Nico into my regret-proofing strategy. He is really part of the way that I intentionally planned to regret-proof my 50s. Maybe you should too. Well, maybe not a noof, <laughs> but you get what I mean. Noofs are not for everyone. But I'm sure there's a dog that would be a perfect fit for you. He's out there somewhere. And if that's what you decide that you want to help you with this important midlife transition, please go forward and check it out. Really think about it and see if it's right for you. Keep me posted. I love hearing from you guys. And I would love to hear about what kind of a dog you welcome into your empty nest. All right. So much to think about. Before I sign off, I want to remind you all about the amazing contest that's on right now. 
You know we love 50 around here. This contest is all about turning 50, and it's called 50 Unplugged. The lead-up to turning 50 can be really interesting. Lots of highs and lows. Well, maybe more lows for some of you, or at least some surprising thoughts that create some weird feelings. This is why I think it's the perfect time to think about how you want to leave your 40s. If you're turning 50 soon, welcome to the party. This contest is for you. You'll have a chance to win a guest spot on this podcast and some free coaching. And even my three-month signature one-on-one coaching package that's called Nine Steps to Regret Proof Your Life. So go to susierosenstein.com forward slash 50 unplugged contest to learn more. You can also find this link in the show notes. And make sure to share this contest with your friends who are turning 50. I don't want anyone to miss out. It's a great opportunity. Okay, that is it for this episode. Remember, as women in the middle, you really owe it to yourself to love your life, even after the kids leave. So let's do this, ladies, one empty nest at a time. Thanks so much for listening. Mm -hmm.